This is part one of rational exponents. So remember, the word rational basically means fractions. That's how you want to think of it. So what we're going to do is define fractional exponents. So far, we've defined exponents for integers. For instance, b cubed means b times b times b, b to the 0 equals 1, b to the negative 2 means 1 over b squared, which is 1 over b times b. All of these are in my videos uh, on exponents, and I have a lot on those. So now we're going to go on to, what, do we have a, what about if we have a fractional exponent? Well, before doing that, let's just look at these two laws of exponents. b to the m times b to the n is b to the m plus n, and also b to the m raised to the nth power is b to the m n, because we're, we'll be using those. Let's say I wanted to know what 5 to the 1 half was equal to. Okay? So I want to know what 5 to the 1 half is equal to. Well, notice that if I multiply 5 to the 1 half times 5 to the 1 half using my laws of exponents, I write the base down and then I add the two exponents. 1 half plus 1 half is just 1. So basically, 5 to the ha 1 half times 5 to the 1 half is 5 to the first power, which is just 5. So what I want you to think about is what number times itself is going to equal 5? And that would be the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. All right, let's look at it a different way. What if I had 5 to the 1 half? I'm trying to figure out what 5 to the 1 half equals, right? And so if I squared that, if I took 5 to the 1 half and squared it, I would have 5 to the, what do we do here? We multiply exponents. 1 half times 2 is 1. Again, I'd have 5. So the question is, what number squared equals 5? And again, from our rules with radicals, that would be the square root of 5 squared equals 5. Hmm, so what do you think 5 to the 1 half equals? Well, it's going to have to be the same thing as square root of 5 for this to make sense. So we have that 5 to the 1 half equals square root of 5. And in fact, if you have any number to the 1 half, it really is just going to be the square root of that number. So if I had 16 to the 1 half, that would mean what? That would mean the square root of 16. And what's the square root of 16? It's 4. Again, remember that we take the principal square root, the non-negative one. All right, let's look at 10 to the 1 third. Let's do a similar thing. If I have 10 to the 1 third, what happens if I multiply by itself three times? You would have the base and add 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third is 3 thirds or 1, so it just equals 10. Hmm. Similarly, I could have written that as 10 to the 1 third cubed, right? That's what that means. 10 to the 1 third cubed, also using my laws of exponents, 1 third times 3, I would have 10 to the first power, which is 10, right? So interestingly enough, I'm thinking, well, what else? Number cubed equals 10. What's that going to be? Hmm, that's got to be the cube root of 10. Remember, cubing, taking the cube root sort of undoes each other, so the cube root of 10 cubed is going to equal 10. So you know what? 10 to the 1 third is the same thing as cube root of 10. What would, let's see, how about 64 to the 1 third equal? That would mean the cube root of 64 and so you have to think, what number cubed is 64? And that's going to be 4. Now, when I did it for the square roots, we actually didn't want to write the 2 in here, but notice, if it's to the 1 power, 
I put the 3 in the radical. For the square roots, it's assumed that there's a 2 in there. So now let's go to the definition of b to the 1 over n. If n is a positive integer greater than 1, so those are the ones we're going to deal with right now, and the nth root of b is a real number, so we're only talking about real numbers, then b to the 1 over n is simply the nth root of b. Now, for the square root, I'm sorry, I want to write 2, so if I want to have b to the 1 half, we just write the square root of b. You don't have to put the 2 in there, right? If you want, you could put the 2 in there. That's up to you. It's assumed. So this b to the 1 half could also be written as a square root of b. You don't need to write that little 2 in there. All right, so let's have you try these problems. See if you could do these on your own. If it's not a real number, write not a real number. Be careful of all your laws of exponents that you already know. And we're just doing an add-on. What are you going to do with these fractional exponents? So put the video on pause and try these on your own first. Okay, let's do it. 81 to the 1 half, what's that mean? That means the square root of 81. And what's the square root of 81? 9. All right, next one. Negative 9 to the 1 half. Now, I've written a parentheses around negative 9, so that's the base. So I want the square root of negative 9. And what's that? Oh, it's not a real number. Remember, we're working with real numbers for the moment. We will learn how to deal with square root of negative 9 much later on. All right, how about negative 27 to the 1 third? The minus sign is not in parentheses, so we are not taking the cube root of negative 27. The minus sign is out in front. The base is only the 27. Okay, so the base is only 27. So that's all that goes in the cube root. So we're taking negative the cube root of 27, and that will be negative 3. Okay, hmm, we have a fractional exponent and a negative number. So the first thing I have to deal with here is the negative sign with the exponent. Remember what that means? 1 over 16 to the 1 half. So that's 1 over, now what's 16 to the 1 half? That's the square root of 16. So I have 1 over, what's the square root of 16? 4. So this is 1 fourth. Tricky one. And the last one here, 5x to the 1 fourth. Just like number 3, the 5 is not being ra raised to the 1 fourth power. That's like 5 to the first power. So the 5 is sort of like the coefficient, and x to the 1 fourth means the fourth root of x. And that's as far as you could go here because we don't know what x is, so we can't simplify this one any further. All right. So there it is. You now know what a fractional exponent is. Here's the definition, and I just want to make sure you realize, notice that the denominator of the fractional exponent, so when you have b to the 1 over n, that n, what's in the denominator here, ends up being the index of the radical, what goes inside that little radical part. And of course, with square roots, we don't write the 2 in there. All right, so the next video will go over fractional exponents where there's not just a 1 in the denominator, so we might have something like 8 to the 2 thirds, etc.